Hey there, Postal here. So today we are going to be hopping into the Tier 8 German fighter, the ME209A. My cat really wants me to hop into it, so I guess I better do that, huh? Let's go. Wow, look at this plane. I haven't flown the ME209A in, well, a very long time. Uh, ooh, we gotta go against a P-80A, and got a human GA. All right, so on this map, the comm center is definitely gonna be the most important sector. Let's see if we can get some people to help us. Um, I wanna get the, I want to get this plane up to its high altitude bracket. It is a very high altitude plane. Um, it's it's not overly quick, but it's pretty quick. It's at tier eight, and there's a lot of jets at tier eight, right? So not having a jet can be a little detrimental. But it's just fast enough. It is definitely pretty maneuverable, though it's not the most maneuverable thing in the world. Um, but just looking at the plane compared to like a BF-109B or E or F or whatever, you can see it's it's skinnier, it's live. It just kind of has like a sleeker feel to it, and it has that in the gameplay as well. So this plane has two 20 mil cannons, it has one 30 mil honking cannon on the hub. That, uh, that big chunk of damage that gets done every once in a while is from that 30 mil cannon. And what you'll see that I'm doing here is I'm not trying to dogfight too much um, if I don't have to. I'm trying to maintain my airspeed and snippety snipe at what I can snippety snipe at. This guy doesn't realize the trouble he's in, of course. Uh, you know, I've got a sniper's gun, so they might not know until they actually get hit. Um, you'll notice I can, you know, hit pretty far out. I actually have kind of an odd setup on this plane. We'll talk about it once we get back into the um, hangar. But right now, you know, the gun like this, you can take out bombers, you can take out things um, from relative ease, relatively easy distance before their rear gunners really start hurting you. Um, and that's why I'm actually going after bombers. The damage per second actually isn't all that high. I think it's like mid 300s, which isn't very good. Um, but it's doing quite a bit of work here and it's that 30 mil cannon that's really doing the work. I try to get it on target. Um, you can actually get some pretty good um, you got a pretty good chance in some head-ons. Um, you know, I'm not going to head-on everything, obviously, but some some um, different airplanes I can head-on compared to others. So we'll see if that happens in this battle right now. Let's see if we can just try to take this guy out. We've got the center, um, and since I'm already over here, let's just continue continue um, taking more sectors, right? Having that comm center is certainly going to help. Put a lot of pressure on them to get to the comm center. We've got the garrison here, or I'm sorry, airfield here. Let's see if we can do any damage to this I, I, IL-20. Excuse me. Got a couple good hits in there, but man, IL-20 has just got so many freaking hit points. It's not the easiest thing to take down, no matter what. Let's see if we can get some more cannon shots in here. Yeah, you can see it just chunking, 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 chunking. Are we going to kill him? Yay. All right, so there's a lot going on at the center. Let's get back to the center. I am in a fighter. I do um, abide by the ABCs of always be capping. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, always be directly involved in the capture of a sector. What do I mean by that? Well, if I hang on to this um, command center, or if it was a military base, for instance, that would allow my team to capture other sectors eas more easily. 
And my plane's kind of more built for defending a sector rather than taking over a sector. So, combining those two facts, we're going to defend the center here because it will actually help us take other sectors. And let's just try not to have a bomb drop on us. And yeah, 1056 isn't the fastest jet in the world, so we're definitely able to stick with him. Let's go ahead and see what we can do versus this XP-72. Very, very fast um, multi-roll, um, but not fast enough, of course. And again, our 30 mil cannon, just doing 30 mil cannon stuff. Got to keep paying attention to the map, though. The P-80A is, has the potential um, to come out on top in a dogfight versus me. I should have about the same uh, maneuverability, uh, but just his speed. Um, and he's got a slightly higher altitude performance, I would think. So I just need to be, I need to be wary of him. Um, he's really good at taking out uh, fighters, right? And my plane's kind of a... It's good at taking out fighters, but... Um, you know, it's, it's bread and butter is really taking out multi-rolls, believe it or not. It's heavy chunks, chunk, 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 chunk. Uh, with this kind of gun, you really have to kind of tap it, tap, tap it, tap, tap it in. Um, because you do not want to overheat the 30 mil cannon. You overheat the 30 mil cannon, and well, then you're just a tier 8 plane with two 20 mil cannons, and it's just not sufficient. So we're just kind of doing that up and over, waiting for more stuff to come in here. I'm not in, there's no reason for me to, to capture the last sector, right? Our command center is going to do that. And so you can see what what I'm talking about when um, cap, I'm actually capturing by defending, which is kind of funny. Okay, here we go. If I can get some shots on target, we'll get him knocked out. And that's the key. If you're doing a head-on, um, that was a safe head-on for me. I knew if I could, he, he wasn't even at full health, um, and if I could get a good couple hits with the cannon, I would come out on top there. Um, I had my finger on the two key just in case I needed to do the pneumatic um, control assist and actually dogfight, um, but was able to take him out um, without it. Uh, so they've got a little bit more coming into the center sector there. I noticed that, and oof. Ooh, see, this was oh, I, that was a worse head-on. Um, going against something like an FW-190, that thing's got heavy fighter armament on it, and it will tear up any freaking fighter in a head-on. Um, remember my 190D? I absolutely love heading on light fighters in because um, you just you melt them. All right, so let's head back to the center here before we lose it. Um, you know, pretty comfortably ahead, even if we lost the center, it wouldn't be the end of the world kind of thing. Uh, it might actually be better if we lose the center, if we're going to be greedy. But, um, I'm not thinking about that right now. I want to try to get rid of this bomber. Got him. Oh! And that's bad. Right after Squall Line. And, okay, well, might I want to go near anybody with a tail gunner? Um, paying close attention to the map. Let's just uh, get some hit points back. I've got enough now. Um, let's go ahead and get stuck in and see what we can do here. Wasn't really paying attention to how many frags I had at this point. Um, I very rarely pay attention to that, actually. And even when I do pay attention, I can't count straight. Um, like in that battle where I was aiming for 25 and got 23 and thought I only got 18. Um, so I certainly wasn't paying attention to where I'm at. Um, now, now that the squall line's down, it's like, well, we're running out of targets, right? So game's going to be over pretty quickly. Let's try to get uh, one more kill in here. One more? One more? All right, game should be over here in just a second. But you can see just the, the pure power of this plane. Um, put it into the right situations, and it will definitely reward you. Um, this is one of my favorite planes. I kept this right after, you know, as I'm going down the line. I try to keep as many of the planes that I enjoy as I can. 
and this was definitely a keeper in my opinion. Um, honestly, just one of the best tier 10 fighters. So, yeah, let's head on back. <laughs> uh, yep, so I got the postal badge again. Uh, 19 frags. Um, 620 capture points. Most of that was defending, I would think. Yeah, 10, 10 when defending. Um, 7,000 damage to aerial targets. So, I absolutely love this plane. This is the first battle I've had in it in a very, very long time, and I don't know why. Uh, it's really a shame that I haven't flown it in such a long time. Oh, man, I can't believe I didn't get one more. <laughs> anyway... Um, I think I need to do some adjustment on the plane. However, I do have this set up a little bit differently than I would normally have my planes set up. Um, and there's one thing that I do want to tweak on it. So for um, for the equipment, I'm, I'm going to have the uh, gyroscopic sight. The reason being is you've only got three guns on here, right? Uh, you've got your 30 millimeter hub cannon, and you've got your 220 mil uh, wing mounted. I guess they're mounted? Yes. Well, not really. They're cowling mounted. I don't even know what you would call that mounted. Somebody will tell me. Um, but you've only got those three guns. They don't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, base, I think, is like 300? 320, maybe? Um, and so I want to make sure that they're hitting as often as possible. Also, the plane, although it is a very quick plane, to be honest, um, you know, it's not... I mean, it's quick for a BF-109. It is not quick for Tier 8. And I don't feel that there's any reason to put a G-suit on this plane. Uh, there's definitely no reason to put cockpit armor or navigational radio equipment. It's just, it's not, none of those are viable in this situation for this plane. So you might as well get your accuracy up. Um, I have tried to put a little bit more um, speed on this plane, as you can tell from both my high-speed gas turbine and the uprated engine. The uprated engine is actually a special project of Germany, so I figured, well, we'll put it on this thing, right? Uh, that helps the acceleration without boost and my overall cruise speed. I've also rolled it for um, extra boost availability and the engine cooldown rate, so it's definitely helping keeping my engine speed up. Uh, but again, it's just not so fast where I feel that the um, G-suit is viable. It's not, you know, I'm not in a jet. Um, uh, acceleration, uh, you know, this is the standard high-speed gas turbine kind of stuff and upgraded engine. I just, before I flew in this uh, match, just put them up to advanced, since I do have this plane specialized. Uh, they were, was this advanced? Is that what it's called? Yeah, advanced. They were, whatever the heck below advanced is, that tells you how much I pay attention to uh, specialization and all that jazz. A couple other things I did want to point out. Lightweight wing, lightweight wing frame is what I did put on here. I did want to help out my maneuverability a little bit. And it's got pretty good maneuverability, all things considered. Again, for a BF-109, you're not going to do anything when you're fighting against yaks or anything like that. But for a high-altitude plane, this is very, uh, very maneuverable. Let's compare it. I think it compares favorably to the P-51H, right? Yeah, significantly more maneuverable than the P-51H. Um, let's see, it's not going to be on the level of any kind of Spitfire, of course. Yeah. Um, or Yak, I'm not even going to look at the Yak. But it's going to be more maneuverable than that P-80 that I kept running into. It's right right in line with how I've got... Well, I've got my P-80 um, with advanced equipment. So my P-80 is specialized with advanced equipment. And my ME-209A is still more maneuverable. So that should tell you something. Something that you might notice, um, I don't typically use long gun barrels. I really don't, uh, I, I'm not even on my sniper type planes typically. But I wanted to test it out on this plane and I really do quite like it. I've got the gun armament here, the 30 mil cannon, able to, its optimal distance is almost 3400 feet. Um, so what is that, about a thousand, a thousand yards? And that's just the optimal distance. So you could see in the battle I started firing about 4,000 feet sometimes. And <laughs> feedback really needs to flight up. Tell him I'm recording. Um, I, I feel like we, when you've got kind of a sniper gun kind of like this with like the supplemental 20 mil cannons, um, I really wanted to try to test out 
how well the 30 mil cannon uh, was at sniping. And because it's relatively rapid fire, um, you're, you're actually able to to put that to full advantage. Meaning, you know, if you miss a shot, it's okay. You've got another one coming in, in, in just a second, literally. It's not like some of those other um, heavy duty um, you know, 57 or 37 mil cannons that take like a second and a half or it feels like a minute before you fire the next one and they overheat after three shots, right? So I feel like, um, well, I just wanted to test it out and I feel like it's doing well. I don't know if it's this setup is the best setup by any means, um, but it's doing well right now uh, for me. I also have on here a manual engine restart. I'm almost certainly going to get rid of this and put it on improved mixture control. My engine didn't get knocked out once. Um, we'll see. I'll keep it like this and see how well we do if my engine um, lasts or not. But this plane is such a good plane and it's on such a good line to be honest. This is one of the one of the like quintessential light fighter lines in this game is the BF-109 line. It is solid from start to finish. Um, I mean, just literally from start to finish. The MEP-1101 is one of the like meta fighter planes in the game. I don't fly it very often. Um, I try to make life difficult on myself. Um, but if I, if I wanted to win as many games as possible at Tier 10, the 1101 would be the fighter that, uh, that you would typically see out on the battlefield. You know me, I'm more of a uh, F-86A or flipping LA-15, love those planes. The 1101 is, is a great plane, don't get me wrong by any means. It's, there's a reason why you see so many of them around at Tier 10. And 1092 is a Tier 9. You don't really see a lot of ME-209As. I think it's because the, the hub-mounted gun can be so fickle, but I really like this plane. This is a lot of fun. And you know me when it comes to a lot of fun and uh, planes that other people don't like, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, have you gone down this line? Have you gotten to the ME-209A? Uh, do you like it as much as I do, or were you glad to get past it and get onto the jets um, that are so darn good on this line? Uh, give me a heads up in the comments. You know I respond to all of them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumb it down. You know, I only get better with, uh, with what do they call it? Um, criticism. I was going to say um, something else, but uh, yeah. So anyway, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed, and otherwise I hope you have a great day. Bye.